please stand and let us begin our praise of God with how firm a foundation. 636. The order of service for the ninth Sunday of Pentecost, or proper 14, is on page 2 of your bulletin, with the service beginning on page 355. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, and blessed be his kingdom, now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known. And from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Glory to God in the highest and peace to people on earth. Lord God, Heavenly King, Almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. Seated at the right hand of the Father, receive our
Lord be with you. In unison, let us pray the collect on page two. Grant us, Lord, we pray, the spirit to think and do always those things that are right, that we, who cannot exist without you, may by you be enabled to live according to your will, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated so we may hear the word of our salvation. Our opening lesson tells how the Lord cannot abide the offerings and solemn ceremonies of a people who are without compassion. A reading from Isaiah. The vision of Isaiah, son of Amos, which he saw concerning Judah and Jerusalem in the days of Uzziah, Jotham, Ahaz, and Hezekiah, kings of Judah. Hear the word of the Lord, you rulers of Sodom. Listen to the teaching of our God, you people of Gomorrah. What to me is the multitude of your sacrifices, says the Lord? I've had enough of burnt offerings of rams and the fat of fed beasts. I do not delight in the blood of bulls or of lambs or of goats. When you come be to appear before me, who asks this from your hand? Trample my courts no more. Bringing offerings is futile. Incense is an abomination to me. New moon and Sabbath and the calling of convocation. I cannot endure solemn assemblies with iniquity. Your new moons and appointed festivals my soul hates. They have become a burden to me. I am weary of bearing them. When you stretch out your hands, I will hide my eyes from you. Even though you make many prayers, I will not listen. Your hands are full of blood. Wash yourselves. Make yourselves clean. Remove the evil of your doings from before my eyes. Cease to do evil. Learn to do good. Seek justice. Rescue the oppressed. Defend the orphan. Plead for the widow. Come now, let us argue it out, says the Lord. Though your sins are like scarlet, they shall be like snow. Though they are red like crimson, they shall become like wool. If you are willing and obedient, you shall eat the good of the land. But if you refuse and rebel, you shall be devoured by the sword. For the mouth of the Lord has spoken. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The psalm tells of the majestic and righteous God who requires true sacrifice and blessing and thanksgiving of God's people. Let us say in unison Psalm 50. The Lord, the God of gods, has spoken. He has called the earth from the rising of the sun to its setting. Out of Zion, perfect in its beauty, God reveals himself in glory. Our God will come and will not keep silence. Before him there is a consuming flame, and round about him a raging storm. He calls the heavens and the earth from above to witness the judgment of his people. Gather before me, my loyal followers, those who have made a covenant with me and sealed it with sacrifice. Let the heavens declare the rightness of his cause, for God himself is judge. Hear, O my people, and I will speak. O Israel, I will bear witness against you, for I am God, your God. I do not accuse you because of your sacrifices, 
your offerings are always before me. Consider this well, you who forget God, lest I rend you, and there be none to deliver you. Whoever offers me the sacrifice of thanksgiving honors me, but to those who keep my way will I show the salvation of God. Faith is, dis <clears throat> is described as holding fast to things hoped for and learning to trust in their reality. Abraham is among those who had such a faith, a reading from Hebrews. Now faith is the assurance of things hoped for, the conviction of things not seen. Indeed, by faith our ancestors received approval by faith we understand that the worlds were prepared by the word of God, so that what is seen was made from things that are not visible. By faith, Abraham obeyed when he was called to set out for a place that he was to receive as an inheritance. And he set out not knowing where he was going. By faith he stayed for a time in the land that he had been promised, as in a foreign land, living in tents, and as, as did Isaac and Jacob, who were heirs with him in the same promise. For he looked forward to the city that would has foundations, whose architect and builder is God. By faith he received received power of procreation, even though he was too old and Sarah herself was barren. Because he considered him faithful, who he had promised, therefore, one person, and this one as good as dead, descendants were born, as many as the stars of heaven and the innumerable grains of sand on the seashore. All of these died in faith without receiving the promises, but their distance, but it from the distance they saw and greeted him. They confessed that they were strangers and foreigners on the earth. For people who speak this way make it clear that they are seeking a homeland. If they are thinking of the land where that, that they had left behind, they would have had an opportunity to return. But as it is, they desire a better country, that is, a heavenly one. Therefore, God is not ashamed to be called their God. Indeed, he has prepared a city for them. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our gospel hymn today is 703, Lead Us, O Father, in the Paths of Peace.
the Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Luke. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Jesus said to his disciples, Do not be afraid, little flock, for it is your Father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. Sell your possessions and give alms. Make purses for yourself that do not wear out, an unfailing treasure in heaven, where no thief comes near and no moth destroys. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. Be dressed for action and have your lamps lit. Be like those who are waiting for their master to return from the wedding banquet, so that they may open the door for him as soon as he comes and knocks. Blessed are those slaves whom the master finds alert when he comes. Truly I tell you, he will fasten his belt and have them sit down to eat, and he will come and serve them. If he comes during the middle of the night or near dawn and finds them so, blessed are those slaves. But know this. If the owner of the house had known what hour the thief was coming, he would not have let his house be broken into. You also must be ready, for the Son of Man is coming at an unexpected hour. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Please be seated. Good morning. Well, we've started in August in typical fashion, haven't we? So good to have you all here in person. And for those who are joining us digitally, electronically, thank you for being here. So lately, I have been giving you one example of faith, the example that we look at God's gracious acts, and that when we say yes to God's gracious acts, that becomes faith. Well, there's always one more way, there's one more perspective, there's one more example to talk about faith. And that comes in our reading from Hebrews. Now, real quickly, we don't really know who wrote Hebrews. Those have, who have come to our Wednesday Bible study, we just finished Hebrews just a few weeks ago. And we learned in that that we don't exactly know who wrote Hebrews. We don't even know exactly what community that was written to. But the one thing we do know is the audience knows their Old Testament well. They know the genealogy from Abraham all the way down. They know the family tree. They also know the ways in which both the United Kingdom and the Divided Kingdom were faithful and not so faithful. Which is what Hebrews starts out in this section. By the way, this is the 11th chapter. In the first part of Hebrews, the writer has given four examples in four different areas how Jesus is superior in every way. So 11 is about that faith is the assurance of things hoped for and the conviction of things not seen. 
which leads me to the example that I want to share, at least today, of another example, another way to view faith. Faith is to sight and reason what a telescope is to the naked eye. I'll say that again. Faith is to sight and reason what the telescope is to the naked eye. Now just for a minute, I'm not talking about the fancy radio telescopes that are outside in space giving us those glorious colored images that NASA enhances and JPL and makes them all amazing. I'm talking about a pretty simple telescope that's not really that expensive that maybe you all have or you have experienced. This wondrous instrument that makes the most distant planets known to us in detail. Like Mars, for example. You know, when we first started looking at Mars hundreds of years ago, there was a debate. Were those riverbeds? Were they canals? Were there really Martians already? Was there a civilization there at one time who had dug those? Or we look at Jupiter and we can see some of the moons through a fairly inexpensive telescope and view them. We might even upgrade just enough to get a good view of some of the ice rings around Saturn. See, what happens is we become aware and we become connected then. Which then lets us come to the decision of kind of where we are in the universe and maybe leads us to a new commitment to how we view ourselves and how we view our planet. Now, a couple Fridays back, Kim wanted to kind of pick the brain of Mindy and Ted Estes, and so we met in Nevada, Missouri, and had coffee. And Ted and I talked about what we were going to preach about in August. By the way, you're going to get a sermon series out of Hebrews from me. Ted's not doing that. If you want to go to Nevada, if you want to go down to Joplin, he's at St. Philip's in Joplin, and who we're going to pray for today, he's down there. He'll, you'll get a different sermon. But what we talked about is we talked about the heroes of faith, and we also talked about a method that he'd come across that he was beginning to find enriching. And it comes with two sets of letters, ACDC. ACDC. Now, there's some of you that probably, if you're engineers or think along those lines of electricity, you're thinking alternating current, direct current. Some of you are thinking of the band, ACDC. I don't care which one you imagine in your head. It's the letters that are important because I just gave you the way to remember it. A, C, D, C. A stands for awareness. See, when Galileo first invented the telescope and then showed it to people and let them look through it, people became aware of how small they were in God's massive universe. Also became aware in a more concrete way of our solar system. It opened up people's minds. That's the A for awareness. The C is people begin to feel connected. They begin to connect with the solar system like they never had before. This then brings to a dividing point because Galileo began to propose that the earth was not the center of the solar system. 
not even the center of the universe, that the sun was the center of our solar system, that Copernicus, Copernicus had gotten it all wrong. That's the decision in the D. The last C then leads to commitment. See, at that point, the people around Galileo had to commit. Did they believe that the sun was the center of our solar system and that the earth was just one of many planets that traveled around it in the form of, a, of an ellipse? It's not circular, by the way. It is an ellipse. Or did you not? Do you become a member of the Flat Earth Society or do you believe that the earth is round? What this exercise, this tool of ACDC is supposed to point to is something that we can use when we're looking at our faith. Is our faith, this was the conversation Ted and I had, was, is our faith static or is it dynamic? We were talking a little bit about that in the, uh, the Christian formation class that we have at 9 a.m., which we could always have more members. We have plenty of chairs. There's room for all of you there. We'd love to have you. Do people come to church just to come and fill the pews, get filled up, feel good, and then go home and just call it quits? We talked about there are some people that said, oh, I like to go to mega churches because I can just come do my thing on Sunday and not connect with anybody. That's their choice. I think it's a sad choice. But what Ted and I talked about is, is that when faith is static? Stuck for some reason? Maybe at one time it was dynamic, but has it just stayed in one place for so long that it's become static? How do we keep our faith dynamic? Which is why me and I really stressed this ACDC, whether you think of current or you think of the band. I don't care. The A is for awareness. Does coming here and participating in the women's retreat about resilience in a changing world yesterday, did that bring you into a new awareness, ladies? Did it help you connect in some way that you hadn't connected before? Did you come to a decision after that, or are you still processing and you're waiting for, well, a decision and what it will lead and what then is the commitment that comes out of it? ACDC. This is what faith is about. Faith is enough here for me to shake my finger at you all. Faith is about how you view your faith. Am I static? Am I dynamic? If you're like me, there's some places of it that's very dynamic and there's some places that's very static and needs, well, a little awareness to it. And I'm sure that you all can point that to me very clearly and directly. <coughs> Because there's sometimes, I'm challenged, like this morning, when the homeless woman was here at 5 after 7 and wanted me to drive her to 24 Highway to a homeless shelter in over, in, over in Independence, Missouri. Why couldn't I drive her? I don't do that. Why couldn't I put her up in a hotel room? That's when my compassion level kind of went down. You, you know, Tom, that's when I was guilty. Like you said, the people's compassion was pretty low. Then when I heard that introduction at 8 o'clock, I already started. I said, Lord, I'm having to repent already. <laughs> so 
See, the idea in whatever we're doing, does it help make our faith static? Or is it helping us be dynamic? You know, part of the dynamics, I think, of yesterday's women's retreat is it has been so long since we gathered as a diocesan community that the ladies loved it. And then they get to choose their two breakout sessions, which I hope you all enjoyed. This afternoon, we're going to have a Northwest Metro Deanery picnic. Is it going to be hot? Yes. Is coming together as a faith family, a community of the diocese, more important than the discomfort of a little sweat which by at 4.30, we'll be back in our homes in air conditioning. And if we have to, we have the access to take a hot shower, clean up, and feel better. That is the message I kept, in a sense, saying with my Facebook post yesterday. The tent's out there. There's a water slide coming for the kids. I wore my shorts. I came dressed up today. I can take out my billfold, my keys, because these are the shorts I took to Florida and can get wet and dry within minutes. It's using the tool of ACDC. How is what we do around here, whether it's sweating in the garden, sweating out there here in a little bit while we eat hamburgers, hot dogs, bring awareness of our faith, of the reality that God calls us, that we connect to Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, that we make a decision to make some alterations in our life because we've made good, good decisions before or you all wouldn't be here or you all wouldn't be watching us online or hopefully those who are watching online say, oh, I am so inspired by this sermon, Father Galen, I'm going to show up in my shorts and a light cool top by 2 o'clock. I hope you decide I'm changing my plans and I'm coming to the picnic and make that commitment. It's ACDC. Awareness, connection, decision, commitment. That's what Isaiah is scolding the people of his time about. God says, let us come and argue it out. As it was pointed out, aren't we blessed to have a God who says, let's come and argue this out. Aren't we blessed as a denomination that during Lambeth, that most of the bishops sat around and argued out the LGBTQ community, of which there was no mandate of a universal statement that was to be made. Because we as Episcopalians will never agree on everything. I promise you. Our strength is that we can agree to disagree. Because the thing that is most important is how we come together and worship in our diversity in that unity. And that we all won't think alike, believe alike, or like the same salads that will be served at 2 o'clock at the picnic. But that's what we should celebrate our diversity. As long as we 
employ ACDC. Awareness, connection, decision, commitment. Amen. Let us share in our unity with one of the ancient creeds of the church, the Nicene Creed, as we say it in unison. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. We have been taught to pray by the Lord Jesus Christ. So with one voice we ask for us all, saying, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For those who serve the church, we pray for our appointed apostolic leaders, Justin, Archbishop of Canterbury, Presiding Bishop Michael, Right Reverend Diane Jardine Bruce, and our rector, Father Galen. We pray for the Diocese of Mbali, the Anglican Church of Nigeria, the Church of the Province of West Indies, and St. Philip's Episcopal Church, Joplin, Missouri. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Gracious and loving God, we give you thanks for the many ways in which you bless us every day but that we may not notice in the busyness of our lives. May we unite our thanks to you with action in the world on behalf of those who desperately need your love. In the name of our brother and savior, Jesus Christ. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For all who govern and hold authority in the nations of the world, especially Joseph, our president, Michael, our governor, and Quentin, our mayor, that we may honor one another and serve the common good. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. You gave life, O God, for us and for all people. We remember before you these people who are in need of healing. Page five of your bulletin. Pina, Pina Nikki, Nikki, Rachel, Vicki, Vicki Joey, Carol, Carol, Mary, Roger, Candy, Candy John, Bonnie, Carly, Carly Cynthia, Cynthia Diane, Diane, John, Scott, Scott Cynthia, Cynthia, Laura, Barb, Cameron, Cameron George, George, Sean, Sean Reverend, Reverend Rolf, Kirsten, Kirsten Linda, Linda, 
Janice, Janice Wyatt, Wyatt Geddes, Geddes, Mary, Mary Bill, Bill, Jamie, Jamie Denise, Denise, Francis, <laughs> Peggy, Peggy Norma, Norma and, and Lloyd, Lloyd, Ian, Ian Lucas, Lucas, Kyle, Kyle Shauna, Shauna, Clara, Clara Nicholas, Nicholas, Jennifer, Lyle. Are there others? Bill. Bill. Martin, Gloria. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. We celebrate, we pray for those celebrating a birthday. Valerie Milliken, Tom Lanio, Bentley Scott, Nancy Marcy, Emma Hale, Susan Stensrud, and Addison Mullins. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. We pray for those celebrating an anniversary. No. My sister and her brother. <laughs> well, no, my brother-in-law. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, God. <laughs> we pray for those expectant parents, Katie and Dan Rollins, Jardine and Bobby, and prayers of thanksgiving for the birth of Oliver Richard Ham. Proud parents are Matthew and Mason Ham, grandmother, oh great grandmother, <laughs> Judy Lane. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For those who have died, especially Joe Gallus, that they will receive God's blessing in everlasting joy. We pray for those whom we now remember, either silently or aloud. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. It is your way of life that we want, O oh Lord Jesus Christ and that we ask of you. And you have offered it. It is a joy to live with you. May those who do not know this find it out through the presence in their world guided by the Spirit. And we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ. Have mercy on us and forgive us that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness and by the power of the Holy Spirit keep you in eternal life. Amen. This is the first Sunday of the month, so be seated unless your birthday is in August or you have a wedding anniversary in August. We'll put birthdays here, wedding anniversaries over here. Birthdays, birthdays, birthdays. I know we got a few. Sue, would you check if those kids, any of them have August birthdays and they need to come in? Emma, get in here. Birthdays are over here, Emma. Yep. I know you're not married yet. There we go. Any other August birthdays? Oh, here comes Cora Marie. Cora Marie has a birthday. 
You've got to come up here, Cora Marie, for a birthday blessing. Come up here and join Emma. Bring your purse. You have a matching outfit. Thank you, girls. All right. Oh, God, your, our times are always in your hands. Look with favor, we pray, on these, your servants, as they begin another year. Grant that they may grow in wisdom and grace and strengthen their trust in your goodness all the days of their lives. Amen. Happy birthdays. How many for you, Cora Marie? Which birthday is this? Yes? How old are you? Yep, yep you're going to be three, I think. Yes, okay. All right, we got that. Seven. Seven. Woo! <laughs> Tell you what, you're just, you're getting up there. Oh, it's amazing. All right. And for an anniversary? All right. Oh, God, you have so consecrated the covenant of marriage that in it is represented the spiritual unity between Christ and his church. Send, therefore, your blessings upon these, the hails, your servants, that they may so love and honor and cherish each other in faithfulness and patience, in wisdom and true godliness, that their home may be a haven of blessing and peace through Jesus Christ our Lord who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Happy anniversary. Brad's up there doing the video stuff. Now you may stand. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Let us greet one another in the peace of Christ. It's okay to be rowdy. It's okay. O oh Lord our God, you are worthy to receive glory and honor and power because you have created all things and by your will they are created and were created and have their being. Let us with gladness present the offerings and oblations of our life and labor to the Lord.
Please stand. All things come from you, O Lord, and of your own have we given you. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. For by water and the Holy Spirit, you have made us a new people in Jesus Christ our Lord, to show forth your glory in all the world. Therefore we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Gracious Father, in your infinite love you made us for yourself, and when we had fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death, you, in your mercy, sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this, for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for your people, the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in him. Sanctify us also, that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. And at the last day, bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ. By him and with him and in him. In the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever.
And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Alleluia! Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Alleluia! These are the gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your heart by faith with thanksgiving. Almighty God, it is by your grace that I am blessed to stand at this side table and distribute your body and blood and the bread and wine to those who are gathered. Amen the body of our Lord Jesus Christ, which was given for you. Preserve your body and soul unto everlasting life. The blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, which was shed for you. Take and drink this in remembrance that Christ died for you, and be thankful. Amen. Sure. Oh, man. Oh, we'll do this. I'll put that right in my mouth. The body of our Lord Jesus Christ, which was given for you, Preserve your body and soul unto everlasting life. Take and eat this in remembrance of Christ died for you, and be thankful. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. The body of Christ, the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. The blessing of God. The blessing of God Almighty, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven.
Let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. And you have fed us in the sacrament of food, in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated for a few announcements. Kids, I know some of you have all come with your swimsuits on and you're ready. I cannot tell you yet if the water slide is set up. So just stay inside in the cool a bit. And let us see where we are as far as getting the water slide up. Okay? I hope it's up too, believe me. I have, we, we, we just, we cross our fingers, they have delivered it. Okay, so, Mr. Lanio, do you, you have a cooking crew that's going to help you? And, Absolutely. Excellent. <laughs> excellent. All right. Jill has an announcement. Come on up, Jill. Or Nancy has an announcement. You, you can come stand in line. We can form a line. It's okay. I'm going to go just sit down and relax for a while. Yeah, because I think we have a lot of things to take care of. I see Chris Kirby coming up, too. I just want to testify a little bit um, because I am so grateful for Sam and for this summer of Fridays. And I had to miss the last two because of being out of town. And I hope we do that again. And you know, every Sunday, yes. <laughs> Every Sunday, we are blessed to have him. And about uh, two years ago, a friend of mine who is a um, supply priest visited our church. He sat in the back, and I was ushering that day, and he said, Do you know, you have a chatty church. Oh. And I said, Yes, we do. It was during the prelude, and people were talking. And it is a pet peeve of mine, and yet I find myself guilty of it too. So I'm asking you to help me during the prelude and postlude. Actually, any time we enter the nave on our Sunday worship, we are to be quiet and worshiping. One of the things I love about this church is that beautiful foyer, and when it's cooler, the water uh, fountain that we have, a place to gather and chat and talk, and just be as rowdy as we want to be. But once we come in here, help me to bring myself into focus. So I thank you. And I'm looking forward to that post loot today, sir. Good morning. Good morning. Hey, I'm just doing another quick plug for the laundry day that's coming up on Saturday, August 20th. We still need about five volunteers to be there during the two-hour increments. Um, we're just going to be there for a total of six. So um, <clears throat> if you're not super comfortable like approaching people to ask if we can pay for their laundry, there's still other things that... Um, you can do as a volunteer if you're there during those two hours. Um, we're going to have a lot of supplies, so even just to have additional people there to kind of watch over the supplies, help us kind of keep organized. Um, it's the first time we've done it, so it's hard to know what to expect. So um, we could still use some volunteers there. Um, if you do plan to volunteer, um, next Sunday after the service, we're going to have just a short volunteer meeting, maybe uh, less than 30 minutes, um, just to talk about some logistics and details for the day, try to get as much worked out as we can before the 20th. So thank you very much. Do you want to talk about coffee hour? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> There's coffee <laughs> today. <laughs> You're not first. I am. So don't worry about it. Um, but the list is out, floating around, email, it's in the newsletter. So coffee hour's on. There's going to be coffee today. So it's already made. 
There's Hawaiian punch downstairs in the fridge for the kids. I forgot to bring it up. It's already made. Never mind. <laughs> I have two announcements. Uh, just a reminder on the back bulletin board to the right of the water fountain on the community treasures bulletin board, there's information about Northland Shepherd Center. There's a calendar for August. And just a reminder on the 17th of August, which I believe is a Wednesday, there's the emergency preparedness workshop for seniors. And I really think it'd be a good thing for us to go to do. The other thing is uh, Nancy, Marcy, and I are getting ready to do our African tea ministry thing again in a couple of months we will we'll be doing that and um, I'm still getting goosebumps reminding myself how last year we sold so many of those drip kits for their irrigation that we probably supplied a village now uh, on Facebook father put that he we we had he put a kit up in the garden for you to go look at so you're seeing what you're what you'll be buying okay thank you It's watering my fall cabbage. Lord, help them live through this heat. So good morning. Um, so this week, Sue and Laura uh, printed off current giving statements, and I believe they're in the foyer for you to pick up. Um, if you don't pick them up, we will mail them to you. We just want to make sure everybody's current on their pledges for 2020. Uh, we're not asking for any additional money. We just want to make sure everybody's current. One, we've been traveling a little bit more and in the flow, get back in the flow of church too, so making sure everybody's current. And two, with everybody's financial uh, giving, sometimes it's electronic and sometimes it doesn't quite work the way we think it's going to, so we just want to double check everything. So if you do get a phone call from one of us, we're not badgering you for more money. We just want to make sure everybody's on the same page and uh, going forward to get that taken care of. So, uh, and most importantly, Thank everybody for your donations of money, your time, and your talents, and this afternoon's sweat. So, thank you. <laughs> well, since uh, the uh, temperature is um, really hot, going to be today, and kind of dangerous, I thought it would be a good time to ask you to save the date for the next chili cup cook-off. <laughs> So mark your calendars now, it's October 15th, and I'm sure that'll be a busy month, so we want to make sure to give it a priority. Because at the last back back bleh, sorry, Backpack Shepherd meeting, we spent a great deal of time on our treasury, and because we have not had a fundraiser um, for quite some time, we're not starting the year off with um, as much money in our bank account as we have in the past. So this is an important uh, part of our church life and our family life. And so we want to make sure uh, that we have the funds to continue the program for as long as we can. October 15th. I'll say it again. October 15th. Save the date for the chili cook-off. Thank you. And it'll be in the bulletin. <laughs> all right, thank you all. It's never too early to announce the chili cook-off, and I'll go sit back down. <laughs> I did that on purpose. <laughs> no, I, <laughs> no just, a, just a short reminder that um, today, we always, bring, uh, when we can, we, we bring produce from the garden. Today, you'll see there are potatoes. I want to give you an alert if you're thinking about, well, I'll just wait. I'm good for this week. I'll wait till next week. There will be none next week. This is the end of the new potatoes for this season. They've been very good. Unfortunately, we haven't been able to share tomatoes. We had a, um, got an insect infestation. We've hopefully taken care of that. But later on, there will hopefully be um, tomatoes and maybe some peppers down the road and then some uh, um, green beans as well but uh, so we share as we as we can but so like I say take all the potatoes you can get because that's it for this season thank you Sorry, Father. no no that's fine I just thought you were getting up to let Phyllis back in you faked me out all right 
Uh, real quick, we were supposed to have lunch bunch this Thursday at Longhorn Steakhouse. They don't have enough staff to care, wait on 20 people all at once. That has been moved to the Corner Cafe in Liberty. Liberty, the Corner Cafe. So contact Susan Brown if you plan to attend. Please, please, please. The Eberts are host. You may get a call also from Marie. I don't know. But anyway, I want you to know about that. Friday, we are showing our last summer movie, Up. And it will be in the common room with air conditioning where it's nice and cool. And Phyllis, it's never too early to promote the chili cook-off when... Hallmark has the Christmas ornaments out right after 4th of July. <laughs> and if any of you see this older gentleman walking with really big headsets up and down Shoto uh, Drive, his name is Nello. He is a sculptor and has sculpted many of the Hallmark ornaments. So, just want you to know he just lives in the apartments up the street. It's a small world, isn't it? Amazing what I learned when I walk Lily, our dog. Anything else for the good of the order? Then please stand. May the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you and remain with you always. Amen. Hymn number 701. 701. Let us go forth into the world rejoicing in the power of the Spirit. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia.